Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how to Google like a boss. We're going to be going over some tips and tricks to help you with your research and how to use the search engine Google and better understand what you're looking at when you research online. Let's get started. Like any of these videos, please be on the lookout for anything that has the pencil because that means I want you to stop and take notes. So first of all, do you know how to read a web address? The web address can be found at the top of the screen when you're doing a search. First of all, you need to look at the domain name. A domain name is found after the initial web address HTTP semicolon backslash backslash www dot then comes the domain name. So for example, if you looked at this, you would see that CNN.com is the domain name. This is going to tell you all about the website, especially if it's a well-known name. If you can understand it and read what you're looking at in the web address, it will help you before you even open the page. It will help in the actual search process when you're looking at Google. So ask yourself if you recognize the actual domain name. Now, do you know how to actually read everything else that you can see in a web address? So after you look at the domain name, there's another thing called the domain extension, and you need to think about what that's actually telling you. So .com and .org are easy examples of domain extensions so that you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. But there's a lot of common extensions, and here is an example of what they mean. .edu means that it's an educational organization. Most United States universities use this. .k12 usually means that it's a U.S. school site. So for example, anything that you're looking at that's in reference to our school will have a .k12 at the end. .ac means an academic institution, mostly used outside of the United States, but it still might be a reputable source. .ch is also a school site that's used outside of the U.S. .com usually means that it's a company. However, if it's used like in the U United Kingdom or UK or England, they've got a lot of different names, right? Then it might be .co instead of .com. .org means any organization and generally is usually a good reputable site. .gov means a government agency, .net means a basic network, and .mil means a military institution. Sometimes extensions can also include country codes, such as UK, which means a website found in England, for example. You can see a ton more um, on, on the different country codes if you just research or do a Google search for country codes, and that will help you realize where it's actually originating from. You can also actually trick codes in your search extension. Um, if you're looking for a specific website from another country, that might give you a different perspective on what you're looking at or what you're researching. Now, another thing to think about is if you're on a blog or a personal website, you need to always be careful when you're researching online. And sometimes personal blogs and websites are not always reliable. So you need to ask yourself if the site is actually credible. Credible means, is it believable, convincing, is the author or website something you can actually trust? All right, so now to the nitty gritty of some Google search tips. So you can use quotation marks around specific quotes or around specific sets of words to actually do a search for that particular thing. So example, if you have a quote from a book that you're trying to see uh, what page it's from, or you're looking at an article, but you can't exactly remember where the article is found. If you have a direct quote, you can put the quotation marks around it and try and find that exact article. Another one that I find to be the most helpful is by using a hyphen or a dash, which allows you to exclude things in your search. So if you do not want to end up with a search that shows you Wikipedia items, you could do dash Wikipedia, and then you won't be shown anything that's coming specifically from that site. So the dashes actually end up being incredibly helpful. So that's a good one to remember. You can also look for a specific link when you're searching for a site that's actually in a specific site. You can include two periods to give you um, a range of things like dates or prices. And then you can also do a related search to find sites that are related to a specific site that you already have looked at but get, got really good information. So you're looking for more things like that. 
So let's take a closer look at what it is that you're actually looking for and how to actually find it. So this is taken from a infographic that I love called How to Get More Out of Google. Write that down in your notes because you can come back to it and look at this great infographic at another time. So what you want to find is maybe a New York Times article about test scores in college, but not the SATs, written between 2008 and 2010. How do you go about finding it? Well, first, you want to add cite at the beginning of your search. That allows you to search for specifically New York Times articles, because that's what you're saying you want up here, right? So you're going to put cite with a, um, with a colon and then NewYorkTimes.com as your actual site that you're looking for. Now, by using the tilde that they've got here, I'm just going to let you know that they don't actually allow us to do that in Google anymore. They've removed that function, so just ignore that particular piece. But you'll notice that we've put quotation marks around test scores because that's going to allow us to look for that exact phrase in our search. We do not want SAT, so we've used that really um, helpful dash or hyphen in front of the word SAT, so that's going to remove that from our search. And then we've put the dot dot in between 2008 and 2010 because that's giving us a range of times when that article needs to be written. So there's a lot going on in that search besides just saying test scores in college. You can really narrow down your search and find exactly what you're looking for. Let's look at another example. So let's say you want to do a report or find a report on the different airspeed and velocities of swallows, the birds. Well, what you're going to do is when you're looking for a report, one really great thing to look for is a PDF. And that's what you guys typically use on your iPads all the time. But a PDF online is generally going to be an article that's going to be easy to access and use and can be usually from a credible, reliable source. But you know, you've got to always ask yourself, is it reliable? So what you're going to do is do file type, semicolon, or I mean colon, sorry, and then PDF. And the fact that that's there is going to allow you to look for that specific type of document. You're going to type in airspeed, and then when you use the word in title, it allows you to look for things that are in the title for a specific thing. So in this case, we're looking for speed velocity, so we're going to put in title velocity and then you're going to use the asterisk in front of swallow because that's saying that you want to find all common terms related to swallow. So in case you want to, you find something but it's on red rump swallow, you're okay with that um, because it's a it's similar items, it's similar liked items. All right, a few more tricks. When you put, and we already talked about this, when you put S-I-T-E to search a specific site. When you put author at the beginning of your search, it allows you to look for a specific author. So let's say you want to find a book review written by John Green. If you put author and then John Green at the end, you will find something written specifically by him. In title, that's the one I just talked about. So you're looking for a specific thing that uses that word in the title of the actual piece. And then when you're using the asterisk, it means in between two things, it means or right before something, it means you're going to find something with common terms like that. And then don't forget that you can search for specific format types. So for example, JPEG is a picture or image, PDF is going to be a document, DOC is a document, um, PNG is also a type of image. Um, a GIF is going to be a moving image, and PPT is a PowerPoint. All of those things can be really helpful when you're searching for something. Oftentimes when I'm doing research for something for teaching, I look for PDF and PPT um, more often than not because I feel like that's going to give me the kind of information that I want. 